Hello again, everybody. This is Michael, KE4EST. And I'm back here with part two on this laboratory generator, or RF signal generator. And I'm going to start here showing you. Right, here's where I uh, pulled the cover off. In here in this RF section. Just kind of want to go over this and run down and show you. I've changed out the capacitor there, back in there, that electrolytic. That one was a really pain in the butt to get into without having to take everything out here. But I did get that one changed out back in there. And the hole that I was showing you. The hell I was showing you in the in this back cover here, see this uh, hole right there. But you can go in and and uh, diddle on stuff. Is this trimmer capacitor here? And I've already set that, but what that does is when you got it on the front and you set your dial, so you set it right on seven megahertz or eight megahertz or whatever and you check it with the frequency counter or whatever and it's not exactly on that you have to go a little bit off to get seven megahertz so if you put it back around right seven megahertz and you adjust this here and that'll uh get you everything set up there for that i was going to do it you know with the camera and stuff but it's just like that made just it's kind of fiddly a little bit for some reason um, but I mean it's there it's set on there uh, this had a whole lot more turn it and I thought didn't if you look back in you can't really see it from the but it's uh, got a long trimmer capacitor back in there so and then something else before we turn around and show you here's a line cord I had disconnected the last time and it comes in and you got your RFI chokes here you know, all this is to keep the RF back off of the line cord coming back in. Or as much as they can, you know. It's not going to be perfect, but especially with these back then. But these here had just regular, just regular old capacitors in there. And I changed these out for safety capacitors. You always want to do that because, see, this is going straight to ground here. This line cord's coming in and going up through these and then going in here and you got these right there across the line a lot of times these regular capacitors if they do go out or something sometimes they'll short and if they do this here's tied to the chassis so if this tube stuff if one of these was to short go a dead short it's going to have a line voltage right here you know the chassis is going to go hot the signal generator is going to keep working just fine until you reach up and touch it and get knocked across the room so so that's why i got these in here these here won't they're designed they won't short they won't go uh shorted when they uh, fail if they do fail and these are a lot better too they most likely won't fail they're made a lot better but anyways that let me bring this around here camera up just a little bit here now here's where you have that selenium rectifier I took that out put in a full wave bridge and I was going to go with individual or diodes and I was like wait a minute you have to look in my drawers and I had some of these high voltage here and I think they're only good for I think these ain't maybe five or six amps that's all you need for something like this you know lower amperage higher voltage so I put this in there um, like I was talking about going maybe I'll go with the full wave bridge so that's what I did went with that and here's dropping resistor I ended up using I'm using a 220 ohm dropping resistor to bring it down and that's something else so you'll hear people or you'll read on internet forums and they'll say oh I'll never put that thing in there just change it out with the regular old diode and 
Yeah, yeah, you can most of the time. Most things, tubes got a pretty good, you know, when you got a tube in something, it's not really, you know, usually going to be rated right at, say, 150 volts. And that's it. We don't go much off 150 volts on my plate or I'm going to blow up. You know, they're, they're a whole lot better. Now, you take some thing, modern day thing today, like a little chip that's made for 5 volts, and you vary that too much, and you're going to burn your chip out. You can't swing a whole lot like, ah, I'll put 15 volts on it. That'll be fine. Yeah, they won't work with those. But tubes, they can handle it. But this here, I was getting a um, hundred and almost a hundred and thirty volts. Uh, I've got a hundred and forty-three volts here coming off of the positive side of this rectifier, and then you come in where the I was doing some voltage checks from the book off the tubes, and some of the pins were showing they're supposed to be around a hundred volts. Well, I was getting like a hundred thirty volts yeah it'd probably still work but you know why shoot it over voltage that much i mean that's pretty good you know 30 volts over voltage so when people say oh you don't need those dropping resistors just don't worry about it eh? don't listen to them and the, i may get a couple of thumbs down for saying that but you know everybody's got their own way or whatever but yeah some things is a you know few volts off and ain't gonna make no big difference i'll agree but when you got that big of a voltage swing, you know, it don't hurt to put in, you know, what it was rated for. It brings the tubes down, brings the voltage down. They're not, you know, some of these receiving type tubes and stuff are not really, you know, and things, especially if it's a, res you're, you know, redo restoring a receiver or something else. They're not, you know, they can probably handle the higher voltage, but they really wasn't designed. They're not transmitting tubes, you know, so. Go ahead and throw that in there. But this dropped it down. I'm reading 106 volts now, where it says in the book 100 volts. So, yeah, I could probably up this maybe to 270 or something or whatever. But now that's 106 volts. That's that's close. That's that's just fine. Um, but it's a lot better than 130 volts or a little over 130 volts I was getting. So I went and changed all that out and. I didn't, of course I don't remember years ago when I used this and I didn't fire it up. Um, uh, now you're saying, well how'd you get 100 and whatever volts? Let me go ahead and throw that in. I did put in like a single diode there, just like, you know, the selenium rectifier. I put that in just to see what kind of voltage I was getting. And then I went with the, uh, changed it out, went with the full wave bridge and then started playing this resistor here. And I got it down to 106 volts. So, there's how I got that. Um, and, let's see. And then, I got that. So, let's just, let me just leave it here. Bring the camera down. Here. And here's all those this line cord out of my way here. Here's all the there's a bunch of capacitors in here that I showed you that was, you know, the paper and wax and stuff like that. So I've changed all those out. Um and here, let's see if we can get this bundle in here. This bundle of three here is right in the power supply. And this, on the other side, let me just go ahead and show you. Bring it around here and I'll show you. Here's that can, right there. This, the can capacitor, it's got the three inside of it. And you can repack these and you can even buy uh, places to sell, a re, you know, if you want to redo that. And, take these out but I just left this in here for looks I could take this out now because it's completely cut loose um, let me just do it like this bring the camera up so here I've uh, I've completely cut that loose I don't know if you can see back in there or not not really good but the cans right in there 
and I've completely just cut that loose. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you built these back in the day, you would use, you know, it's got three tabs sticking down for your three capacitors that's in there. You got three tabs, and you can just tie on it for your point to point wiring and use that. Oh, I've got to tie this here, and the resistor needs to go over here, and another capacitor or something. So you can just tie them on and solder on and use that. So I cut that completely out. I got another terminal strip here um, that I added myself, put in there and redone it and what I've done is took three capacitors here and try to make them as look as neat as I could here I mean they're solid they're in there like I said the can's completely removed or it's completely disconnected but now these are replacing it and I went through and checked all the resistors out most of these are Allen Bradley um, and Allen Bradley's usually pretty good so they checked on pretty good um, you can see like all the discs discs hardly fail the disc capacitors and like I said the only reason I changed out the other ones and the line cord was because it was going straight you know across the line but a lot of these here you know I left they're checking out okay so got all that and get it cleaned up here let me get this thing turned around back the camera off a little bit here and you can see how much prettier it looks here I took all these knobs off cleaned everything as best I could you can still see spots and stuff here and there but you know or somebody looks something up here like acid or something's got on it I don't know that's what it looks like acid spots like battery acid or something but pulled all these off cleaned everything even the indicator light and then put everything back on and then these little pointers here on the knobs they slide off and I think I've shown it yeah in the first video how they slide off I took those and they you see how much brighter they look and wider now they would yellowed over the years I was just sitting in the sun or something like that that's what the old plastics do I just took those and dropped them down in a I took a glass uh, cup, poured, you know, maybe a quarter of a glass of hydrogen peroxide, dropped them down in it, and set it out in the sun because the UV, that's what does the trick. And let the UV just work on it for a couple hours. Took them out, washed them off, cleaned them up, put them back on. And of course, I cleaned the knobs, put everything back on, and they come out really good. And cleaned all the contacts, everything's working really good now before it was a little bit you know clunky but all that's working good now here I've changed out you can see I took off the microphone connector that they use a lot of times and I've replaced it with the BNC and I didn't go with I was talking about or I meant to talk about <laughs> bringing out another going inside and in, uh, the what you'd want to do is go inside where this stepped attenuator can is and uh, see that big round can right here where it's got RF shilling on it too go in there and come off find the furthest away spot and come off with a piece of coax and come out and it's going to put it in the back of another BNC connector for a frequency counter and I decided not to um, I can tee off here if I need to and uh, it'll still work just fine with putting the one little attenuator in if I have to or whatever I got plenty of that stuff so um, but there it is and it's all done I've like I said I think I was talking about maybe going through the alignment thing much alignment to it that uh, capacitor in the back like you say, you get this right at five megahertz here, and it ain't five megahertz on the frequency counter. You have to turn it a little bit that way to see five megahertz. So I brought it back to where best I could look at it up and down. I went in and turned that until it lined up with the, you know, with the shielding on. I went through that little hole and turned that till it lined right up. Um, and because there's not really, uh, like I was going to say, there's not a whole lot of adjustment with this particular model to go in and do an alignment. 
you've got two pots here that's for the setting your meter up one's for the um, for the showing your modulation if it ain't reading exactly right and one's for the RF carrier best I can tell when I was testing they were just pretty close you know as close enough as I'm gonna use for something like this you know that's been restored and so I just left it and so there you go um, I hope this these two videos help somebody else that comes across one of these and wants to restore it and uh, put it to use again of course you know I'm not gonna use this all the time I've got you know modern more modern ones and with nice frequency readout and it's phase lock looped and all that and but I'm gonna use this I'm gonna set it in the you know on the back of the bench and I'm gonna you know sometimes I'm working on something like say restoring an old receiver just use this you know uh, and get it really close and if I really you know whatever I can double check it with the more modern one but for most stuff I'm trying to line say an old five tube you know receiver or something this here would probably be just fine so um, anyway I hope you enjoyed that uh, these two videos if you did uh, reach down there and hit that uh, like button and if you've not subscribed to my channel please feel free to subscribe and because there'll be more stuff like this and until the next video this is michael ke4est 73 everybody